Why would you buy this Creality K1? Is there any reason that you should have this fast 3D printer that runs a clipper? Do you actually need an enclosed 3D printer that has the build volume that is equal to a Creality Ender 3? Isn't this a bamboo clone or is Creality going somewhere else with this 3D printer? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about this 3D printer, the Creality K1. Hi, Zach here. You know, it's finally time to do the review about the Creality K1, the flagship from Creality. Well, this 3D printer was sent by Creality to do a review about this 3D printer and make also several videos with the Creality K1. And maybe you already have seen several of the videos where the Creality K1 was featured in. Well, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hey, hit the subscribe button. Let's talk about the Creality K1 for a moment. Well, it has a Core XY motion system that makes 3D printing much faster. Well, we are talking about maximum printing speed of 600 millimeters per second. With the acceleration of 20,000 millimeters square, ramps up this 3D printer up to 600 millimeters per second in 0.03 seconds. And the K1 is six times faster than a regular ordinary Creality Ender 3 with 50 millimeters per second. The hot end on this 3D printer is very light in weight. It only weighs 190 Grams. The maximum flow rate of this hot end is 32 millimeters cube. It has a ceramic heater and a dual gear direct drive extruder. It has a titanium alloy heat break and copper alloy nozzles with the maximum temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. With these temperatures, you can print many different types of filament, which can be handy for different kind of users. It has two cooling fans. One is built into the print head for direct cooling while printing and a huge fan on the right side that blows air over the model for extra cooling during printing. This reduces the stringing while printing. The Creality K1 comes standard with a slicer called Creality Print, which is based on Prusa Slicer and Prusa Slicer is based on Slicer. I have made several videos about Creality Print but you don't really need to use this slicer if you are already known with Prusa Slicer. There's a way to add this 3D printer to Prusa Slicer. Hint, hint. Of course, if you're not familiar with Prusa Slicer, then for beginner users, you can use Creality Print until you are more familiar with this 3D printer and wanna try out a different slicer. Well, the unboxing and setup. This printer comes very well packed, including a wooden crate. Let's get the crate out of the box first. I don't know if Creality still does that, but when I got my K1, it was in a box, which was also in a crate, which was also in a box around the crate. It's very weird, but it was very well packed. After the unboxing, well, setting up the printer is very simple and easy. And especially it comes with a manual where, which shows you exactly how to set up this printer. Well, once this printer is set up, you switch on the printer, run the setup that is prompted on the screen for the first time use and then follow the calibration steps that are shown on the screen as well. Once every step calibration is done, load the filament and start printing the test models that are on the USB drive. So yeah, what are my thoughts about the Creality K1 after having it for several months? Well, let's start first with the cons of this 3D printer. The standard size, the printer is not, not bigger than a normal regular Creality Ender 3 and the 3 Pro. There is a Max version, the Creality K1 Max, but that one is also higher in price. You will pay 854 US dollars for that one, and that one is even more advanced than the K1. This printer doesn't come with AI stuff, no chamber camera, no LiDAR sensor. You have to buy them, or you can only buy the chamber camera, which is weird that you cannot buy the normal LiDAR sensor. I did see on the printhead that there is the option to add also the LiDAR camera, but since you cannot buy them, you can not add it to it. Well, the flexible build plate. It is a very smooth build plate and it looks very nice, but I had many adhesion problems after several prints. You know, it sounds like it is a user issue, but after talking with several people that also had the K1, I wasn't the only one having adhesion problems. Well, after the recent update and also using 3D lag, I didn't really have any bad adhesion issues anymore. So that is nice. Well, one of the other things that I did notice while setting this printer up was that you have to bind it with Creality Cloud and use Creality Cloud in order to work with this printer. I didn't 
detached this uh, printer from Creality Cloud in order to see how it works. If you can still access it, maybe I will do a video later about it. But you know, it's I think it's it's not very nice to force users to let a 3D printer bind with their surfaces and sites. Some other thing, if, if you are going to run this printer, you will know it is printing. The fan, the chamber fan, the big fan on the right hand side, it is loud. It's just like a jet plane starting off. It's, it's that loud. Creality OS as a G code flavor instead of Marlin, instead of Rap Rap or Clipper. So I also would like to see that Creality is going to be more open how this Creality OS is actually built as a G code. Well, that said, Creality does run Clipper on this printer, but it seems to be very closed. Users cannot do anything to, you know, make some little changes, add some other stuff to it. For the more advanced users. If you're a beginner, I can imagine that you don't want to mess up some things inside of the Clipper firmware, but I think that it's decent that there is an option to unlock it and go into the more advanced settings within Clipper. And lastly, regarding the filament spool placement, it's on the backside of the printer. My friend Chuck Hellebuck from Chap Filament Friday, he did a video about filament spool placement on the right side of the printer. Well, check out that video after this one and uh, say hi from me. Well, let's talk about the pros of this 3D printer. And I can assure you there are more pros than cons. This printer is a well-designed printer and it looks very modern. I do like the design. It fits very nicely on my shelves and especially if you are building a something like a print farm. You want to have multiple of those 3D printers standing next to each other. Well, in the, on this shelf, it fits perfectly. The display is very big and it is a touchscreen. It's a 4.3 inch color touchscreen. Also the graphics are looking amazing. Very nice, very intuitive. Talking about menu, it is a very clear menu. It guides you through the things like loading the filament, calibration and other needed function on this 3D printer. Some other cool thing, this printer comes with Wi-Fi, which is very nice because most of my printers that are here in this room are all LAN connected. And if you are going to move the printer to another location within the room, in my case, then you need to look how the wires are going to be routed. And with Wi-Fi, it's more easier. Well, some other thing, the chamber light. There is a chamber light inside of this 3D printer, which is very helpful, especially because all acrylic panels are very dented and dark, uh, which makes your model pop out more and you can actually see what the printer is doing. On the front side, you have this amazing USB connector. Nice, reality, very nice. Not on the right hand side, not on weird places, just on the front side where it belongs. Nice. Also gate belts. I see a brown, red brown color belts. I think that are gate belts, so more quality belts than normal standards, cheap, I don't know, AliExpress belts. And it runs also some calibrations before a print starts. This makes sure that all prints will be successful, at least when it comes to build plate adhesion. And also something that I did notice, object detection. So if you have a spatula laying there or some other thing on the build plate and you want to start a new print, the bed lowers itself and waits until you remove the object which is very cool. Further, it has a filament runout sensor, it's called a smart filament runout sensor, a power loss recovery and input shaping because it's clipper on the machine. Overall, I'm very happy with this 3D printer and especially after the update, prints are sticking way better and you know, they are looking great again. The printer is fast and it doesn't mean that you will get bad prints out of this 3D printer, you know? The models sliced with Creality Print do look very nice and very pretty, and I cannot complain about it. Even when you are using Creality Slicer and dialed in the settings, you will get also very nice models, and they are also fast printed. Not as fast, but hey, it's a way better, you know? And even when you are using Prusa Slicer, you know, for your models, you will get also some nice models out of it. If you are interested in buying this 3D printer, well, check out the links in the description of this video. You know, there's a... Uh, beautiful subscribe button over there and here is also something you know check it out